Madam President. Senator from Connecticut. Madam President, I ask that the quorum call be lifted. Without objection. Thank you. Madam President, even in the greatest deliberative body in this nation and likely the world, there are moments of profound sadness and regret, and this moment is one for me. I am deeply dismayed that the Republican leadership is engaging in an effort, an effort doomed to fail in just a couple of hours, to defund probably the most trusted provider of health care for women in the United States of America. It's misguided because there are so many significant issues that should be front and center for this body. Making sure that we invest in our roads and bridges, making sure that we improve our education system, making sure that we keep faith with our veterans. And so many of them are going nowhere because of the partisan paralysis and gridlock that dismayingly to the American people has prevented real action. And I regret that we are, in effect, distracted from those goals and those missions that the American people expect us to fulfill. Once again, many of my colleagues across the aisle have aligned themselves with the most extreme of the anti-choice movement to undermine access to critical health care services for women, millions of women in this country, thousands in Connecticut who depend on Planned Parenthood for the basic health care screening, cancer diagnosis, family planning, and contraception services that distinguish it as one of the most trusted health care providers in the United States. And it is the Republican leadership, not just a few senators, but the Republican leadership that has set up this vote to defend, to defund Planned Parenthood. So instead of the Senate moving forward to provide additional health care services to women, it has engaged in this onslaught and assault on women's health care, taking a step back with legislation that is really, let me say bluntly, a political charade, a stunt, a bill or legislative measure that will go nowhere and is as much a sham for the supporters as they are for opponents. The fact is that Planned Parenthood provides health care services to women across this country. Only 3% of its activities relate to abortion. 97% of what it does is to provide screening, diagnosis, family planning. If this measure goes through, millions of women will be undiagnosed with cervical and breast cancer. Millions of women will be denied access to contraception and family planning. And millions of young women will be denied the kind of education that they need to prevent pregnancy. It is about preventing pregnancy that so often Planned Parenthood is engaged and to make it safe, legal, and rare. Eliminating 528 million from the largest women's health care provider in the country would create a public health crisis. Pure and simple, a public health crisis would be the inevitable consequence of this measure to defund Planned Parenthood. Of the 2.7 million women Planned Parenthood serves every year, 78% are low-income women, low women, 
who depend on Planned Parenthood for breast cancer screening, testing for sexually transmitted infection, hepatitis B vac vaccines, family planning counseling, education on how to recognize and leave abusive relationships, domestic violence, referrals to other medical specialists and many more essential services that would be unaffordable and inaccessible without Planned Parenthood. Over half of Planned Parenthood's clinics serve women in medically underserved areas or in health provider shortage areas. 13 of Connecticut's 17 women's health centers serve women in rural or medically underserved parts of my state. The funding Planned Parenthood would mean 64,000 of my constituents could lose access to quality health services. And because there is no network of health care providers with the capacity to serve this population, if Planned Parenthood is denied funding, millions of women, particularly Medicaid recipients, would lose access to quality health services. And the result would be a public health crisis. That's the stark reality of these numbers and statistics, dry and abstract as they are, they stand for real life consequences, real women whose lives will be inevitably transformed for the worse if this measure were to pass. Beyond the din of this place that so often consumes us, the confusion and the noise, there are real people whose lives will be affected by this kinds of measure and whose lives are affected even by the effort to defund Planned Parenthood because of the uncertainty and doubt that it creates. These real people are women like Elizabeth A. who said, and I'm quoting, when I didn't have health insurance three years ago, I went to Planned Parenthood where I had access to safe, affordable reproductive health care. I still go there for my health needs. I was able to get STD testing and birth control when I couldn't afford it anywhere else. Women like Rachel S. of Naugatuck. Birth control helped my husband and me to put off having a family until we were financially ready to care for a child. The effects of pregnancy both physically and financially mean that free or low cost birth control is an important factor in a successful future for both the woman and her family. And Nicole B. of West Haven. I come to Planned Parenthood because it's a safe place to get birth control and exams. Everyone is helpful and non-judgmental. The city needs a place like this and many women benefit from Planned Parenthood services. These stories are from real people whose lives we are supposed to care about here. I care about them because I know so many women whose lives have been affected by Planned Parenthood. I know so many of the staff and dedicated professionals who work at Planned Parenthood clinics. One spoke to me on Saturday afternoon of one of the low points during last week, during the controversy that has enveloped Planned Parenthood, and how she was inspired and revived by simply passing a room where one of the counselors was talking to a group of young people, both men and women, about the education that was important to them in learning about preventing unwanted pregnancy and how seeing Planned Parenthood at work in that setting, the real work of providing health care and education inspired her to keep going despite those difficulties. The fact is, over and over, my constituents, the people of Connecticut, have told me they choose Planned Parenthood because of the professionalism 
and dedication and non-judgmental approach to their patients. Many view Planned Parenthood as a safe space, a safe space to come when they need advice, when they need medical examination. If Republicans succeed in defunding it, women will be without their most trusted health care providers, so many of them that rely on it because it is trustworthy and professional and dedicated to them, first and foremost, to them. So today I stand with Planned Parenthood and the thousands and thousands of women in Connecticut and around the country who benefited from their services. And I will vehemently oppose these efforts to allow a secretive and dishonest group to discredit and to dismay so many. They have manipulated facts, put employees and volunteers in danger, and have eliminated the organization's ability to provide essential services. But the important point is that we resist this effort today to defund an organization that has provided so many services to so many people in need, has enabled this nation to avert a public health crisis that will ensue if we follow this misguided effort and that we follow our better instincts and make sure that we keep faith with women who need health care in this nation. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.